Yes, another retro unboxing. Today we will be unboxing the EVGA GeForce 8600 GTS Super Super Clocked Edition 256 Megabyte PCIe DirectX 10 Ready with a big circle DirectX 10 Ready HDCP capable, back when anyone cared about that, video card. It is SLI ready, it is graphics by NVIDIA, and it has a free copy of Enemy Territory Quake Wars inside. It also includes EVGA 90 Day Step Up Program, which probably isn't valid for this card anymore, I'm thinking, because it's pretty old. Okay, SLI ready, full DirectX 10 support, blah blah blah, this is all the same stuff we saw before. High dynamic range lighting, wow, two dual link DVI output support, two 2560 by 1600 resolution displays, wow, uh, what else do we got here? Okay, lifetime warranty, really? Comes with a lifetime warranty upon product registration. Well, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool for like a relatively low end card. All right, make sure these two stickers match up before you buy this card. Let's open this baby up. There we are. Break that seal like nobody's business. Designed for extreme HD gaming. Not anymore, it isn't, but it was. I hated this packaging from EVGA back when they used to package cards like this because it was impossible because of the uh, the lips on the plastic to put it back in without catching the uh, the tab here. So then you could never put this stupid card back in the box if you wanted to, um, which is a problem when you're a professional unboxer like me. Okay, the folder contains EVGA case stickers, an installation CD with trial software, and an installation guide. So throw that CD away, download the latest drivers off the NVIDIA website because I can pretty much guarantee you this is a really old driver at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this back in there. EVGA's packaging has really come a long way since then. Okay, enemy territory quake wars. Um, Okay, not a super relevant game anymore. Ooh, look at this. We got one of those uh, component out thingamajiggy bobs. That could be useful. Not. All right, we've got two Molex to single PCIe power adapter. We've got an S video out cable. That could be useful. Not. Okay, then we've got two DVI to VGA adapters because back then most people were still running VGA monitors. Well, not maybe not most, but many gamers were still running VGA monitors, even if they were buying new gaming graphics cards. All right, so here, I'm just going to put this aside, put this aside, put this on a side, and bring it over here. And we'll have a look at the 8600 GTS. Now, I don't remember exactly what the difference was between the 8600 GTS and the 8600 GT, but... Um, my understanding is it's something to do with lower memory on the GTS and a higher clock speed or something like that, and the performance was fairly similar. Now there's a very good reason actually that I'm doing this particular retro unboxing, but I'm going to get to that after I have a look at the overall layout of the card. So this is from back when gaming cards could actually be single slot. So you can see here, we've got just a single fan here. We've got a nice little cooler. I don't know if it includes any heat pipes. It looks like it doesn't. Just a, a typical thin cooler. And it actually exhausts all of the air, either out the back of the cooler here, or um, probably more of it comes out of the top of it here. So that's gonna be maybe a bit of an issue for the card the next one down, because as I recall, the 8600s did run a little on the toasty side, but shouldn't be that big of a deal, especially with the ventilation that you get in most decent gaming cases. The SLI bridge used to be located in a fairly different location compared to what we see now, where the SLI bridge is usually right about here, unless there might be a secondary one here on many cards. Uh, we've got a single PCIe 6-pin power connector. We've got some capacitors and voltage regulation. We've got a PCI Express 16X slot that the card runs off of. And then up here, where we would typically these days see DVI, DVI, and mini HDMI, we now see that uh, S video and component outputy thing as to go along with the two um, dual link DVI ports. On the back of the card, we find nothing really of interest. And that's pretty much it. So, why did I do this unboxing? The reason is that I wanted to compare a card from a few years ago to a card that costs the same today as this one did a few years ago, and I want to do what I did with the GTX 560 Ti launch with the 550 Ti launch. So I'm going to take that card from a few years ago in the similar price bracket 
and I'm going to say, okay, let's say you own one of these, or you own an 8600 GT, or some other similar class of GPU, what kind of an image quality improvement, what kind of a gameplay improvement are you going to see by upgrading to a current generation similar DirectX 11 GPU, such as the 550 Ti? So, thank you for checking out this unboxing of the 8600 GTS Super Super Clocked. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other videos, especially if you do want to see that image quality comparison. I'll likely use Crisis just because it's, uh, you know, a pretty demanding game. I might use Metro 2033. I haven't really decided yet. But uh, definitely subscribe if you want to make sure that you catch that image quality comparison between the 550 Ti or Ti and the old 88, oh, 88, 8600 GTS Super Super Clock.